the neuro protection of oral enjoyment by offering milk drops. My name is Barbara Rourke and I'm a clinical staff nurse at the NICU at Blank Children's Hospital in Des Moines, Iowa. Our learner objective is describe why premature infants are at higher risk of feeding problems and I have no conflict of interest to declare. Today, I want to talk about how one infant in one moment changed how we care for our premature infants. That infant's name was Lily. One night after tucking her in, I placed a drop of breast milk on her lips. Lily began to pull her little hands closer to her face and to suck stronger on her pacifier. I did not take care of Lily again until the night before her scheduled G-tube at 42 weeks. Now, 15 weeks later, as I placed a drop of breast milk on Lily's lips, the response was so different. Lily now puckered her lips and pulled her head back. This was that moment. What happened? We need to know that feeding begins in utero. The fetus tastes and swallows the amniotic fluid as he sucks on his fingers and touches his face. Suddenly, everything changed. Bright lights, strong smells, his skin is dry, he feels weak, his mouth is a war zone, tubes, suction, oral care. The very low birth weight infant has a survival rate greater than 85%. 80% of premature infants will have difficulty with feeding. The increased risk is because from 23 to 32 weeks gestation, the premature brain is developing rapidly into neural networks that depend on molecular cues and activity. The more frequently a neural connection is stimulated, whether good or bad, the more likely it will become permanent. In other words, if the infant receives more negative oral experiences than positive, the negative may become dominant, which may affect the infant's desire to eat. Since safe oral feeding depends on development, maturity, and coordination, the premature infant will not feed orally until 32 to 34 weeks. For the infant born at 23 weeks, that is 9 to 11 weeks of taping, suctioning tubes, and oral care, and very little oral enjoyment during the most critical time of structural differentiation of the brain. What we do know is that neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to change because of experience, and all experience is filtered through the senses. Now how can we harness this knowledge? By doing what we already do, but adding an enjoyable oral component. We will do it with cares and gavage feedings to provide a multi-sensory enjoyable oral experience. After we tuck you in, we will stay with you and place a drop of milk on your lips and offer you a swab or pacifier. If you accept, we will give you more milk a drop at a time. If you refuse, we will remove it and let you lick milk a drop at a time. But if you don't respond, we will let you rest. When you are allowed to nurse her bottle, it is all very comforting, all very familiar. So let's take a quick look at the results of the milk drop study. The most important columns are three and five, which shows average length of stay. For example, the 24-week control infants had an average length of stay of 135 days, while the intervention infants had an average length of stay of 90 days, a 45-day difference. Nine out of 10 of the intervention groups had a shorter length of stay, the most significant seen in the smallest and most fragile of infants. Our NICU saved $663,000 on these 99 infants. This video is a beautiful little girl who always loved her milk drops. I give her a drop of milk and offer her the pacifier by stroking her lips. It may be tempting to insert that pacifier, but be patient. Give them time. Let them accept and enjoy. I bring her hands back to her face and help her stay tucked. As I hold her, I gently talk to her. Every sense is engaged, wiring and making connections. Same little girl, a little more active now. I give her a drop of milk and offer her the pacifier. As she accepts the pacifier, she calms down, but remains alert. She now sweetly brings her own hands to her face as she sucks. Can you see how she is relaxing? Even her breathing is slowing down. Same little girl, now 34 weeks, ready and waiting. I give her a drop of milk and offer the pacifier. There is no hesitation as she pretty aggressively roots. This is so great to see. 
as she accepts the pacifier and starts to suck, she again brings her hands to her face and calms down. This is all very comforting, all very familiar. As you can see, our job is important long term to these infants. When we send our babies home, we are so excited for them. We assume everything is going well. First birthdays, the inappropriate shoveling in of the spaghetti, holidays, and teenage get-togethers. As I have spoken about the milk drop study, nurses who are parents of preemies who are now adults want to tell me about their children, how hard it is to celebrate, the daily struggle to eat, the sadness of watching your child stare at the food, and the isolation felt. They tear up as they tell me how these aversions have followed their children into adulthood. And maybe, just maybe, milk drops could have helped their child too.